Good morning. Welcome to the Wilson Center. I'm Christian Osterman. I direct history and public policy as well as the European Studies Program. Can you hear me? As well as uh, European Studies here at the Wilson Center. Um, and it's a great pleasure to welcome to you to this conference um, on ideological storms, intellectuals, and the totalitarian, totalitarian temptation. Um, as you know, uh, this conference is a two-day event. Um, we'll uh, have the first uh, several sessions um, uh, here uh, at the Wilson Center. And then, as you can tell from the program, uh, the remaining sessions tomorrow will be at the Embassy of Romania um, uh, in, uh, uh, on 23rd Street here in Washington. It's my great pleasure to uh, welcome back um, several uh, of the participants of uh, past year's conferences, uh, but most importantly, uh, to welcome back uh, my co-organizers uh, of this conference. We, uh, this is a uh, co-organized event and the Wilson Center, even though the host of today's event is really um, the, uh, the, this plays the, the smallest role in this enterprise. The uh, credit uh, is really due uh, to two individuals uh, and two institutions um, that we're collaborating with and have in the past, uh, Professor um, Horia Papat Patapievici um, uh, from the Romanian Cultural Institute. Horia, and here. you're there. Um, we're delighted to have you back, and uh, not just for this conference, but uh, there are several ties between um, the conference, uh, between the Wilson Center and the Romanian Cultural Institutes, including, um, of course, a junior scholar program for. Uh, young Romanian scholars that we've been hosting here for several years and that um, we're delighted to have our junior scholars with us here in the course of the day as well. I, I haven't seen them yet, but um, uh, I think they will join us if they haven't already. The center, the Wilson Center, and the other person who is really uh, uh, responsible for this conference, of course, is uh, um, Professor Vladimir Tismanianu, uh, known to all of you, so I don't really need to introduce him. Uh, he uh, is a former Wilson Center fellow, an alumnus of the Wilson Center. He's had uh, several affiliations and stints with us, so uh, he uh, truly feels like family at this point, part of the Wilson Center family. He is, of course, professor of politics and director of the Center for the Study of Post-Communist Societies at the University of Maryland, a chairman uh, of the Presidential Commission in Romania for the Analysis um, of the Communist Dictatorship and President of the Scientific Council of the Institute for the Investigation of Communist Crimes and Memory of the Romanian Exile. He has been um, awarded um, the Distinguished Scholar Teacher Award and the Distinguished International Service Award by the University of Maryland and he's a prolific writer um, uh, the list is far too long to um, even start covering it, but um, his numerous publications include The Crisis of Marxist Ideology in Eastern Europe, The Poverty of Utopia, of course, uh, perhaps most famously, Reinven Reinventing Politics, Eastern Europe from Stalin to Havel, also Fantasies of Salvation, Nationalism, Democracy, and the Myth in Post-Communist Europe, and Stalinism for All Seasons, a political... History of Romanian Communis Communism, which was awarded the Barbara Yelavich Award by the American Association for um, Advancement of Slavic Studies. Um, he has also, um, together with um, uh, Horia, uh, uh, conceptually designed this conference series and uh, has been publishing uh, collected volumes based on past conferences, most recently the end of the end and the beginning, the revolutions of 1989 and the resurgence of history and the devil in history lessons of the 20th century. Let me just say that this conference 
uh, is really um, a centerpiece of uh, a remarkable um, uh, conglomeration of Romania-related events that we have over the years developed here at the Wilson Center with the uh, cooperation at, uh, with the Romanian Cultural Institute really at uh, the heart of this. I have to thank in part my, um, my, former, um, uh, my former colleague Mircea Muntianu, now at the State Department, who um, in many ways was um, their beginning of um, this um, very productive collaboration. Uh, not only have we hosted together with the, the Romanian Culture Institute um, the series of conferences, not only do we have what I think is a, is a wonderful uh, program for younger Romanian scholars to come here and spend several months here at the Wilson Center taking advantage of Washington's and the center's um, resources, archival, Library of Congress, and so forth. Uh, the center also uh, hosts on an annual basi basis the Jan Ratio Democracy Award, an award uh, named after uh, the late Romanian um, emigre um, politician Jan Ratio. This year, um, on December 1st, we will, uh, ha uh, we will have our uh, annual Ratio Award workshop, uh, this time with Nabil Rajab, recipient of the award, um, uh, R R Nabil Rajab, one of Bahrain's um, leading human rights activists who will be talking about the price of freedom and democracy, defined Bahrainis and the Arab Spring. And uh, you're all welcome to join us for this event on December 1st, 2011. And those are just the highlights of, of a year full of events. Our junior scholars will, in <coughs> fact, on November 30th, uh, I believe, uh, give um, an afternoon workshop on their research here at um, the Wilson Center. We will have later uh, this month, uh, next week, uh, in fact, um, the current John Ratsu chair at Georgetown, Dennis Delatant, who has joined us here today, uh, talking about British plans for the subversion of Romania. Um, so all of you are welcome to join us for that. And uh, we've had other events, including um, uh, the young Romanian-born scholar Christina Bejan um, st uh, uh, staged here um, uh, with my program, um, a, a dramatic uh, reading of the journals of Mihai Sebastian, uh, an event on theater and the Holocaust in Romania. And uh, there have been other events through our uh, State Department uh, Title VIII funded uh, events program and also by the history program uh, on Romania. So uh, the center has really grown uh, thanks to the partnership with um, Maryland, uh, with Vladimir, and um, uh, w uh, thanks to the partnership with the Romanian Cultural Institute to a Center for Romanian Studies um, in this country. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled by that. And so um, with that, um, I'm going to shut up and turn it over to Vlad, who will uh, really talk about the central idea behind this conference. Uh, I wish all of us um, a good conference. Let me uh, say a word of appreciation for b to Bogdan Jakob. Where's, where's, where's Bogdan? All the way in the back, who has done a phenomenal job in organizing uh, this conference, and I also want to acknowledge, if she's here right now, um, Alison uh, Lilakov, who on my, my, my team, who uh, has been helping as well, and you'll meet several of our uh, junior scholars and staff meetings, including our current Korean junior scholars, um, who we are turning into avid Romanian studies experts uh, in the course of this conference. With that, um, over to um, Vladimir for a further introduction. And again, thanks to um, Dr. Uh, Patapievich and the Romanian Cultural Institute and University of Maryland and Sarah's Georgetown for co-sponsoring this conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do they work? Do you think this? They work, yes. They work, okay. 
Uh, I'll say just a few words about the project and then I'll say a few words to introduce uh, our keynote address uh, speaker, uh, Professor Mark Lila, uh, which is a great privilege for me. So let me start first of all. Uh, this is indeed a project that started probably, I don't know, six years ago or so. Uh, it was a discussion of all places in Georgetown in which Horia Patapievich and Mircea Mihoesh, the Vice President of the Cultural Institute and one of our best friends, were together with the then Romanian Ambassador in Washington and we were chatting about what we could do uh, about creating such a uh, program which would not be, the last thing we wanted was uh, Romano-centric parochialism. Uh, so we said that we don't want to have something that would be just focused on Romania. That's not what we want. We want Romanian scholars to be involved in the international uh, epistemic reflection. And that was uh, received a, a, an enthusiastic support from Christian Osterman, from the then director of the of the Wilson Center, Lee Hamilton. We hope that Jane Herman would would, would be uh, also as supportive for this, and we very much look forward to that. So, uh, and it became a, a multi-institutional project. Uh, it started, we published, and uh, I had, uh, you know, he, I was working together with Kosti Odaki, who was here. We had an uh, enthusiastic uh, graduate student at CU who became uh, the soul of the whole project, Bogdan Jakob, who is here. So we started the project. The project started initially, we didn't know how it would work. I mean, it was just in, it wa we found a, uh, a topic. The topic was the 40th anniversary of the common form. Uh, it was in 1987. Uh, I remember vividly that uh, we invited, we are not very, although I thought I know, I knew a lot about Yugoslavia and Yugoslav, uh, let's say, post, uh, post secession war, uh, mutual, uh, acrimonious feelings. I remember vividly that we had one person and another person, both of them very famous scholars, who said they would not sit at the same table no matter what, because uh, this guy was an advisor to that guy at the moment in the graveyard in which my parents were, etc. Okay, so we had all the story. I speak about very famous people. Okay, so, uh, and highly respected people. Okay, so we went through this initial crisis. So the first, so actually we got, uh, and the enthusiasm of the Wilson Center, we also got the extraordinary support of the, of the Central European University Press. And the result was that the first volume came out. It's called, uh, it's called the Stalinism Revisited, the Establishment of Communist Regimes in East and Central Europe. At that moment, the keynote speaker, we had different keynote speakers. At that moment, the keynote speaker was a person who for us made absolute sense to speak because he was is not only a brilliant political theorist in the United States and conceptualizer, he's also a great expert on a certain moment in Romanian history, Ken Jowett. So Ken gave the uh, first keynote address. Then we had The Promises of 1968 that came out as a volume, Crisis, Illusion, Utopia. Uh, so we started this project. The project that went uh, quite well. The keynote speaker at that moment was Charles Meyer. Uh, I suspect some people don't know by heart because they published pieces in those volumes, and we tried very hard to make it as uh, as open. It, it, it is one of my regrets. I mean, there are two things. I, we succeeded at this moment to be quite unexpected in what we put together. We have, for instance, Nikos Maranzidis here speak about Greece and communist intellectuals and so on, which is for me a fascinating topic. We, uh, self-critically, I would say we have never succeeded very well with Latin America, although we tried very hard. Because, you know, I, it, it's my mistake. I should have approached Enrique Krause and have him and come with the redeeming, <laughs> redeemers here and tell us more. Okay. The third is the one on 89 that Christian Osterman kindly mentioned. The fourth would come out. This is coming out this year. The fourth is about memory, justice, democracy. It's focusing on coming to terms with the past. The fifth is the one that we have right now on intellectuals and the totalitarian temptation. And we plan to have a conference next year on dictators and dictatorships. Uh, so the, what started was a uh, volume that would have more or less matched the famous volumes on Stalinism, like Tucker and like whatever, there are some uh, landmark, Norman Neymar and so on. It turned into a big project uh, revisiting the second half of the 20th century, basically. And I'm very happy that we succeeded. Uh, and uh, Okay, Mark something here which is extremely important and I uh, very politely, humbly and friendly would like everybody, I did it already, please uh, turn your cell phones off. 
okay, please, it's very important. We discuss ideas, and the last thing I teach, you teach, you all teach, okay. So it's the last thing we need when we discuss, I don't know, Hannah Arendt and Benjamin and whatever, and suddenly we hear the cell phone. I mean, it's truly not very helpful. Okay, I would lose my, the, the flow of my ideas immediately. Okay, so please uh, bear with us and just do not use cell phones during the conference. Okay, so uh, now a few words. Uh, I, uh, I think that we are very grateful to the institutions that have uh, held this. Christian mentioned them. I just, uh, you know, simply uh, welcome what he said and endorse everything he said. So I'll not repeat all the institutions and all the support and so on. It it is uh, it it goes without saying that we are extremely grateful. By the way, this is uh, broadcast live now. So basically, many people podcast live. That's okay. That's why we need to wait for the microphones in the discussion. So that's an important thing for questions and discussions and so on because this is seen everywhere. So as well. Seen everywhere. Okay. But can be seen everywhere. <laughs> okay. Although, uh, based on in the past, I mean, I received, including sometimes people who get very upset, why wasn't invi I invited? And so on. So, you know, you get these kind of things as well. Okay. So it's not simply, or why did my name was not, my book was not mentioned, and whatever. I don't know. Okay. It happens. Okay. So uh, now it is uh, truly a great honor and a great chance for me to, to, to uh, introduce uh, Mark Lila. Uh, who is going to give the keynote address. Uh, everybody could see the short bio, which was uh, was posted uh, on the web, so it's uh, I'm not going to go into this part. I'll come, I'll start with a uh, relatively, uh, no, with a personal uh, confession and then a few words why I think Mark is uh, the truly ideal person to deliver the keynote address for this uh, for this conference. Uh, the personal uh, recollection is that I think we first got together in, uh, it was probably in 96 or 97 at NYU conference on the Dreyf anniversary of the Dreyfus Affair. And if I can, that one of the organizers of the conference was indeed Tony Judd. And if I may take this opportunity to pay tribute to the memory of Tony Judd, I think it would be totally appropriate. Uh, that's where we got together. It was a reception. We talked about your mentor, Harvey Mansfield, and about many. I remember all kinds of things. And, uh, you know, we haven't seen each, each other uh, frequently in these many years. But uh, I'm pleased to say that I've been following very closely his writings. In, uh, including the recent, relatively recent one in the New Republic about the great impact of authors like Carl Schmitt and Leo Strauss in China. Okay, and, uh, and what it means, you know, why, that, why this fascination in contemporary China was, was, uh, was Leo Strauss. Okay, so that will be my first question after that. Okay, so uh, Mark Lila is a professor of humanities at uh, Columbia University, author of uh, writings on uh, Giambattista Vico, uh, on some of the authors that we are going to discuss here. He's the author of The Reckless Mind, a book, by the way, translated into Romanian among other languages and with many reviews and uh, glowing reviews. And uh, we've been following his writings from, you know, an important figures from, I don't know, Arendt and Benjamin to, to, to Schmidt and, and, uh, and Junger. Uh, so I think that uh, this is the type of research agenda and writing agenda that uh, uh, recommends most highly somebody to speak about the topic of uh, our conference uh, today. Uh, I would also mention, because it's uh, for some of us of, uh, orig originally from Romania, or who still live in Romania, a good friend uh, of some of us here uh, turned 70 this year, uh, I mean Thomas, Thomas Pavel or Thomas G. Powell, as he's known in the United States, who is a professor at the University of Chicago in both Comparative Literature and Committee on Social Thought, and uh, also a friend of Mark. They started the project, which is a very important project, on, uh, published by Princeton University Press on contemporary French political thought. Uh, I mentioned Thomas because he turned 70 this year and he re received an important decoration from the president of Romania. So he's very happy, actually, we talked about uh, having this conference, so he extends best regards to everybody. So here we are, and uh, this would be my short introduction. We, deal, we, we are going to listen to a, uh, in my view, and I can, uh, I can uh, demonstrate or, uh, you know, uh, present enough arguments for that, with a uh, very thoughtful, 
a brilliant intellectual historian uh, who has reflected for many years on the topics that we are going to discuss in this conference. The final thing is that uh, I would say just one thing. Uh, in 1987, we had a conference in uh, New York City, and the title of that conference was Will the Communist sta State Survive? Question mark, the view from within. Uh, we invited a number of we, meaning I was working still at the Foreign Policy Research Institute, and Dan Pipes was my director. And you know, uh, we invited, uh, among other people, Eugene Ionesco to be the keynote speaker. He couldn't make it. He sent some notes and so on. But we had a number of. I mean, the keynote address was given by the late Jerzy Kozinski the well-known uh, American uh, Polish-born writer, and uh, he, we discussed what it means, well, all the, the role of ideology and the role of intellectuals in both the birth and the collapse of totalitarian regimes. I think this is a fascinating topic after so many years, you know, whether we, uh, we like it or not, but we are, uh, I personally think it's, uh, time is, is running too fast, but, you know, we are getting closer, we're in 2011, that means we are already in 2017, and whether we believe it or not, it's going to be the 100th anniversary of a certain event. Okay, so I think that this uh, this conference, in a way, so probably we should not put an end next year to conferences because we should no, we should think about because the anniversary of October is coming. Okay, thank you very much.